Good day everyone, what a lovely Christmas day and here is ASEAN News. Coronavirus victims in South Korea are increasing after infections in Seoul. South Korea reports a number of coronavirus deaths as the country's biggest wave of infections since the start of the pandemic strain hospital's resources. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency reports the novel coronavirus had claimed another 22 lives increased sharply from a previous high of 13 deaths in a single day earlier in the week. The victims are rising after infections had spiked in Seoul and surrounding areas with another 1,014 cases, including a daily record of 423 in the densely populated capital city. Tighter social distancing rules have failed to reverse the trend and the government has warned it may have to impose harshest restrictions on business activity, though it says that move will only be a last resort. The government says it will give people plenty of warning before imposing level 3 carbs. Jama Islami militants transferred to Indonesia capital for further investigation. Indonesian authority transferred 23 Islamist militants, including one of the commanders of the 2002 Bali attack, to capital Jakarta for further investigation. Zulkarnain, one of the senior most members of Al-Qaeda link militant group Jama Islamia, was arrested in a raid in western Indonesia's Sumatra Island along with 22 others. Aswin Siragar, police officer, tells reporters, Jama'a Islamiyah's stated aim is to build an Islamic caliphate in Southeast Asia. The investigation in Jakarta aimed to track all the networks that helped Zulkarnain to stay hidden over the years. We are glad that today we capture the 23rd of the uh, CI, Jama'a Islamia group, which uh, was uh, two among them, was the most wanted uh, person. The bomb maker of uh, several bombing in Bogo and Zulkarnain. Zulkarnain was a subject to the person of consolidated peace, which was known as uh, a very, very dangerous person globally and of, of course locally here in Indonesia. Uh, we continue further investigation until we want to crack down all the network which help both of them has been hidden for several years that's why that the 23rd uh, person will be further investigated police calls the man's very very dangerous person in indonesia and internationally in a news conference shortly after the man donned in orange jumpsuits arrived at sukarno hatta international airport Zulkarnain was believed to have been involved in making the bombs that were used in the Bali bombings that killed 202 people and the bombing of the 2003 JW Marriott Hotel in Jakarta that killed 12 people. File footage show Kenya militant Kolo Abdi detains inside Philippines police headquarters over alleged terrorism. The prosecutors of United States says the charge of Kenya-born militant with terrorism-related offenses, including conspiring to hijack an aircraft for 9-11-style attack on an American target on behalf of the Somali-based Al-Shabaab militant group, they are previously responsible for planning a January 2009 attack on a hotel in Nairobi, Kenya, in which more than 20 people were killed. Federal prosecutors in Manhattan and the United States Justice Department says Kolo Abdi Abdullah was arrested in the Philippines in July 2019 and transfers to the United States to face six federal charges related to alleged terrorism. At a hearing held via electronic link, Abdullah tells a United States magistrate judge he was pleading not guilty to all of the charges. His defense lawyer agreed with the judge that Abdullah should remain in custody pending a hearing in January. The Justice Department says Abdullah acting at the direction of an unarmed senior Al-Shabaab commander traveled in 2016 to the Philippines to enroll in fight school to train for a possible 9-11 style attack. Prosecutor says that between 2017 and 2019, Abdullah attended the flight school on various occasions and ultimately completed tests to obtain a pilot's license. Abdullah also researched how to hijack a commercial airline's flight, including how to breach a locked cockpit door from the cabin. He also researched information about the Talist building in an identified United States cities and how to obtain a United States visa. Abdullah faces a mandatory minimum sentence of 20 years in prison, but a possible maximum sentence of life. Thailand repatriates to Sumatran orangutans to Indonesia. 
Two critically endangered orangutans smuggled into Thailand three years ago are returned to Indonesia where they will undergo a rehabilitation program at center in Sumatra before being released into wild. According to a joint statement from Thailand and Indonesia's embassy in Bangkok, Ung Aing and Natalie are seized on the Thailand and Malaysian border in 2017 and after the smugglers were prosecuted, Thailand agreed to send them back to Indonesia. The pair are taken from a wildlife rescue center in Ratchaburi province to Bangkok's airport before being put on a flight to Indonesia where they will initially stay at the rehabilitation center in Jambi province on Sumatra. This is the fifth repatriation of orangutans back to Indonesia since 2006. Surapong Chawe Park, Action Director of Division of Wild, Fauna and Flora Protection says, before being put on a flight, the great apes have clear of having COVID-19 after taking a test. According to the World Wildlife Fund, there are only estimated to be around 100,000 Borneang orangutans left in the wild, while there are only estimated to be about 7,500 Sumatran orangutans. Singapore reopens borders with health protocol for business travelers on a short term. An official says Singapore is set to reopen borders for business travelers and officials on short-term stays starting in mid-January. Chang Chung Singh, the country's trade and industry minister says authorized travelers will be allowed through a special travel lane and reside in a dedicated facilities for up to 14 days. Travelers will be subject to routine COVID-19 testing upon arrival and throughout the duration of their stay and can move within a facility in a group of up to five people at a time in order to reduce the risk of mass transmission. The facility will be equipped with meeting spaces and safety barriers to separate local visitors from foreign travelers so they can discuss business affairs at a safe distance. The new initiative will help to bring traffic to the Changi airport and boost the recovery of the hospitality sector in a controlled and safe manner. China ready to cooperate with other countries in peacefully exploring. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin says China is ready to cooperate with other countries in peacefully exploring and utilizing the outer space. Wang made the remarks at a press briefing when congratulating Chang E5's returning to Earth with the country's first samples collected from the moon. Wang says to the press that Chang E5 successfully returned to Earth after 23 days of space mission and Xi Jinping sent a congratulatory message. As China's most complicated aerospace systems project that involves a full range of technologies, Chang'e 5 marks a big stride forward in China's aerospace program. It will make contributions to deepening the knowledge about the origin of the moon and the evolutionary history of the solar system. Wang says the space exploration knows no bounds, but just as the saying goes that where there is a will, there is a way. China is willing to work together with other countries in carrying forward the spirit of pursuing dreams, daring to explore, coordinating in tackling naughty problems and engaging in win-win cooperation so as to make greater contributions to the peaceful exploration and utilization of outer space for mankind and to the building of community with a shared future for mankind. Wong expresses thanks to countries and international organizations including the European Space Agency, Argentina, Namibia and Pakistan for their support and assistance in the Chang'e 5 lunar exploration mission. Malaysian court charges a deaf pastor from South Korea over sexual assault. Pastor's lawyer Shanmugan Ganeshan says a deaf South Korean pastor charges in Malaysian court with sexually assaulting two men in separate incidents dating back to 2013. He adds, Jeo jong hoon 54, who uses sign language to communicate, charges in a court in Western Penang State with using criminal force to outrage the modesty of the men. The alleged victims are described by the police as having a speech and hearing impairments. Ji was accused of hugging, kissing and grouping the men who were in their 20s in two separate incidents in 2013 and 2017. He did not enter a plea since he could not understand Malaysian sign language. Shan Mugan adds that his client intended to plead not guilty. G could face up to 10 years in prison, a fine or both. The court set January 18 for the charges to be reread to G after his lawyer requested that the court appoint an international sign language interpreter. China calls on the United States to end unacceptable sanctions. During a speech at the Asia Society, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi calls sanctions levied by the United States on Chinese companies unacceptable. 
We urge the U.S. side to stop overstretching the notion of national security, stop the arbitrary suppression of Chinese companies. Just in recent days, the executive branch of the U.S. administration has been expanding the list of sanctions against Chinese companies. This is unacceptable. We hope the U.S. side will take a sober-minded approach and provide an open, fair and non-discriminatory environment for Chinese businesses and investors. When we turn on TVs, read newspapers, the United States confirms it will add dozens of Chinese companies, including the country's chop chip maker SMIC, to a trade blacklist. In addition, Wong says United States and Chinese relations had spiraled down to the lowest level since the establishment of diplomatic ties 41 years ago. Their accusations. They are However, as you have mentioned in your opening remarks, Chinese-US relations have spiraled down to the lowest level since the establishment of diplomatic ties 41 years ago. This is not something we would like to see because clearly it's not the interest of the Chinese and American peoples. Nor is it helpful when global efforts are needed to overcome the difficulties. We have noted the four He accuses senior United States officials with irresponsible presumptions of guilt and emotional lashing out. He also says that China was noting the stated priorities of the president-elect Joe Biden. We have noted the four priorities laid out by the president-elect Joe Biden. We believe that at least three, COVID response, economic recovery and climate change provide space for cooperation between our two countries. At least three, COVID response. Ties between Washington and Beijing have grown increasingly antagonistic over the past year as the world's top two economies spared over Beijing's handling of the coronavirus outbreak, imposition of a national security law in Hong Kong and rising tensions in the South China Sea. Indonesia police arrest top suspects behind 2002 Bali bombings. Police in Indonesia says that a suspect arrest of the commanders with 22 others militant believed that are behind 2002 bombings on the resort island of Bali that killed over 200 people had been transferred to the police headquarters in Jakarta along with evidence linked to his case. Police says that suspect Zulkarnain is a senior member of the Al-Qaeda-linked militant group Jamaa Islamiyah. The group's state's aim is to build an Islamic caliphate in Southeast Asia. So for the time being, the latest information is that we have carried out an in-depth investigation and the evidence and suspect have been taken directly to the Indonesian police headquarters in Jakarta. Spokesman Ahmad Ramadan says in a statement, Zulkarnain is the commander of the Bali attack, who was arrested by the anti-terrorism police. Reuters was unable to reach Zulkarnain or find out whether he had any legal representation. According to the UN Security Council report, he also goes by the name Aris Sumarsono. Zulkarnain is believed to have been involved in making the bombs that were used in the Bali attacks and in the bombing of the JW Marriott in Jakarta in 2003 that killed 12 people. Thailand reports transmit local cases, take total 500. Thailand reports over 500 cases of coronavirus from the center of its migrant-driven seafood industry, the biggest one-day rise in a country that had previously brought the epidemic largely under control. The outbreak appeared in Samut Hakon province, southwest of Bangkok, where four infections are reported at the shrimp market. 516 new cases were found in Samut Hakon province, more than 90% were asymptomatic, and they are immigrant workers. A total of 535 new cases, bringing Thailand's total number to more than 4,800 with 60 deaths. Local cases are previously largely fined in people observing quarantine after having been in close contact with an infected person. Most of Thailand's recent cases have been imported. The surge in cases come as just as Thailand is seeking to revive a tourist industry that has been devastated by the pandemic. It will reduce restrictions to allow more foreign tourists to return. The government predicts about 8 million foreign tourists in 2021, up by around 2 million from this year. Foreign visitors in 2019 before the pandemic numbered are around 40 million. And that's the news for today. Merry Christmas everyone, enjoy the festive season, stay safe and see you again.